like a, it's like a pastor in the church. <laughs> 89. Well, it is Sunday. Yeah, so true. 89 68. Gonzaga pulled away. It's a one point game at halftime, but the Zags just sort of ripped through and made it to the Sweet 16 mm. again. That's nine in a row for Mark Houston. The active streak. You see, longest streak in tournament history. And the Tar Heels went 13 straight times. And who in the world would bet against Gonzaga doing that again? I think if you watch Gonzaga over the course of the season, maybe they were a little bit of a victim of their own standard in the past. You go, well, he's maybe not quite as good as the previous Gonzaga teams we've seen. But they're hitting their stride at the right time. Yeah, the they've built throughout the course of the season. People forget that they were supposed to have Steel Venters, who transferred in from Eastern Washington. He was probably going to be their best player. And he got injured toward ACL, so he wasn't available. So they had to kind of figure it out. And, you know, they got punched a couple times in the non-conference with the, the really difficult schedule they play. But the thing that amazes me about Gonzaga is the high-level consistency. You know, year after year after year, they're contending. And this nine straight Sweet 16 thing, uh, thing is utterly remarkable. It's remarkable. And look, we all hear it. People say, well, Gonzaga, they play in the West Coast Conference. Okay, they're making the tournament. All right, fair point. You know, they're the best team in their league, making the tournament. So if you want to try to rationalize their success, all right, they play in a lesser conference. If they were in the Big 12, it'd be harder. Yeah, it'd be harder. How do you explain away <laughs> nine straight Sweet 16s and two championship games in the last seven years, whatever it is? It's absurd how good they've been. And they say, wow, but they haven't won a championship. Fair point. Purdue hasn't been to a Final Four. Tennessee hasn't been to a Final Four. You know, should we not talk about those programs? It's remarkable what they've done. Just absolutely remarkable. I totally agree. I, Mark Few, I think a key to coaching is having agility. A key to coaching is figuring out how, how to put your players in position to play to their strengths and find a group that can play together. And beginning of the year, exactly, Jay. He was throwing kind of like pasta against the wall, hoping it would stick. But once he figured it out, his agility to say all of a sudden, you know, Ben Gregg, he's going to be a starter. We're going to play Anton Watson more at the four, but he can stretch. Gregg opens up the floor a little bit, so now we can play more through Graham E.K. We got greater size on the floor so we can rebound the basketball. His agility as a coach, his ability to figure out and tweak his system to fit his personnel, this is just incredible. But he does it every single year. Rosters change. The one thing that remains the same his ability to figure his team out, put him in position to be successful, and have the agility to tweak his system to fit his personnel. This is a marked few building a program at Gonzaga, but having the understanding that at times you got to show have, have, have agility. I got a chance to do their game earlier in the season against USC, and they look, they look decent. I appreciate your points, JB. They're way better now. The thing that scares me about Gonzaga, if they are able to face Purdue, if Purdue's able to get by Utah State, Guys know how to play. Like, they never rush anything. Mm -hmm. They execute things. They, they follow through on detail of plans. And I, I think that's such a – sometimes when you watch younger teams play, they just start going. Things look a little bit hectic, out of control. That's not who Gonzaga is. They know who they are. Now, Purdue knows who they are too, but that's a team that I feel like has a legitimate chance to beat Purdue. Well, they played early in the season in Maui. Yes. And yeah. Gonzaga played them really tough. It's really difficult, obviously, when you've got Zach Eady in the game mm -hmm. because he's, he's a unicorn. There's nobody like him in college basketball. But one of the guys that I marvel at is the development over the years of Anton Watson. You know, he came, he came in, he's a local Spokane kid, and he came in and he was like a role player. And remember what he did to UCLA this year? What did he have, 32? 32, 32 15 yeah. 15 out of 16 or whatever he did. And Gonzaga cut up Kansas in the second half of that game. It wasn't just, you know, the offense they ran. They, they, the, they attacked the second helper. So uh, Kansas would come over and help on the initial action, and then all of a sudden they exploit the fact that the, the guy helping the helper wasn't going to be there, and they cut them up. I haven't seen Kansas cut up like that in I don't know how many years. It was remarkable. And how about Nemhard? Just his growth as the season went along was phenomenal. And Kansas getting cut up was a re abs uh, absolutely apparent to their head coach, who has, in his own right, uh, given a great deal of consistency as Kansas year after year after year is contending. But 